Kevin Batchelder, and he's our lead software developer. Uh, and Kevin and I started in the company the same year, although yeah. Kevin, Kevin was actually been with Cisco longer than me. Uh, yeah. By a few months. Yeah, I probably so, know. Uh, yeah, we both started back in 97. Uh, Kevin. Okay. All right. All right, well, uh, I'm Kevin Batchelder, lead developer here with Cisco. Stay on the box. Oh, for that oh, thing. Yeah. All right. Okay. Stay in the box. Awesome. A clicker. Too much technology. All right. And I'm a software guy. I know. <laughs> Computers can't live with them, can't live without them. All right, so what's new, what's coming? Um, let's start with Breeze. That's, uh, we only got a little bit to talk about. Breeze has been pretty stable, not very many changes, thanks to EPA not changing stuff a whole lot. Uh, so we've just had some minor improvements over the last year, and I mean real minor stuff, uh, not even worth talking about. Other arrow. Uh, the one thing that is coming up with Breeze is uh, EPA is coming out with ECMPS 2.0. They've put that off until 2024, quarter one. Um, so really, I have nothing to tell you about that. Maybe uh, our EPA rep will talk about that when it's his turn. But uh, hopefully by this time next year, we'll have something more to say about this. So uh, I can tell you we'll, we'll require a new version of Breeze when we get there. Other than that, hold on for a year. We'll have another update in uh, first quarter. Uh, April of uh, 2024 should be uh, very busy and very interesting. And the uh, URL there is where EPA puts all their all their updates on this. So, <clears throat> yeah, interesting. It should be interesting. Okay. Uh, redundant Cedar servers, if you've been in this meeting before, you've probably heard me talk about this. Uh, this is something we introduced a couple of years ago where we're, for the Cedar software, we actually run a primary server and a secondary server. Uh, they back each other up at the database level. And if one is missing data, they'll move the data from the other one, fill in the holes. Uh, so we've had that for a couple of years now. A and B, one and two. Okay, sure. Okay. So, yeah, okay. All right, interesting. So, I think at Calpine, I think they're named, like the machines are all named V1 and V2, but I think the alarms internally all still say primary and secondary, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Secondary uh, yeah, operators might flip out a little bit. So. Um, basically, we've just had a few performance improvements. Uh, some of those are still ongoing as we get more experience with, with the, uh, uh, data transfer from one to the other, trying to cut down on the number of alarms that our operators are seeing. Uh, so we have had quite a bit of success with that over the last year or so, reducing the unnecessary alarms. And uh, the one uh, improvement you might notice, or operators might notice, is if Cedar comes up and the primary server is not available, Cedar will actually connect to the secondary and, and move on. So. That's all I'll say about that. A uh, few other changes. Uh, New Jersey had some regulatory driven changes this year. Uh, they had a very funky um, determination, uh, duration determination for three hour rollings. Uh, nobody else in the country does it their way and we did it their way. So anyway, uh, Alberta had a whole bunch of regulatory changes that came in. 2021, 2022, so Cedar's been updated for that. Uh, CGA linearity alarms. Every day, Cedar goes through the CGAs and linearities that are in the database, and 
examines those. Is there, are they missing? Uh, did the most recent one fail? Was the most recent one run offline? Um, has the unit run 168 op hours this quarter? Or if it's a CGA, has it run this quarter at all? Uh, and it, run, it runs through all of that. And if there's something there worth alarming about, uh, it, it creates an alarm. Um, the one thing that is new about this that we've done over the last year is it used to do this only for linearities. It now does it for CGAs also. So that was a, that was a request that's been added. Yes. It does not do, it does not back and validate automatically. Um, the, the, the back and validation for part 60 cals is pretty well established and it's, it's a short, it's not gonna go back very far, relatively speaking. Uh, the, 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 my, my concern about doing that with linearities is uh, it could go back a long ways and uh, Trying, trying to correct from that. If the software, if, if the linearity data wasn't in there correctly or something got misinterpreted and all of a sudden we've got a year's worth of data we have to go fix, you're probably going to gripe about fixing it more than you are in validating it. Yeah, we could probably make the alarm. I, I, it's been several months since I looked at this, so I don't remember what the alarm verbiage is. Uh, I think it may even say what the most recent CGA, you know, if one's missing, I think it'll even say what the last, when the last one was. Uh, or if it's failed, I think it puts the date of the linearity or CGA in there. And yes. Forward. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the, yeah, I think that's the key. The user's gonna have to do something. And realistically, you probably don't want the operators being those users. So they're gonna call you guys, the environmental people and let you guys fix the, fix the problem. Yes. Yeah, hope, hopefully the alarm wording is such that they know, you know, I can't just give this to the SEMS tech. I've got to, I've got to pass this up to the, uh, the environmental people. I do know that as part of this, uh, we added more, prior, prior to this, uh, the number of conditions it checked for and the uh, number of different alarms it raised was smaller. So we've expanded that to check for more things and tried to make the alarms more descriptive. So. Uh, a few other minor changes uh, in poor, uh, performance improvements, um, especially of rebuilding startup and shutdown events. 
uh, reports. Somebody recently asked for a tab delimited instead of a comma delimited uh, data export. So that's now available. Uh, Spanish language, we've added Spanish, especially for some of our uh, uh, Latin American customers. Um, and we actually have it to where we can dual, we have a dual language option where we can load an English uh, configuration for us and the customer sees the Spanish. And that way, when they ask us for help troubleshooting it, we can pull up English and they can see the Spanish and everybody's happy. So, yes. Uh, we had a few cases where the uh, rebuild for some startup shutdown events could take uh, a long time. Brian can probably elaborate on that. Uh-huh. Okay. There is, yeah, on the AutoCal setup screen, that is available in there. Okay. That's something you can add. Yeah, and we do have the feature in Cedar, you know, because of the part 75. Um, uh, there, there's one requirement that, you know, when you when you run a cow, it prospectively validates the data forward for 26 clock hours. And then if you do the offline cow demonstration like you're talking about, you have to run an online cow at least every 26 operating hours. So there is a feature in Cedar. You may be using it, maybe not. Uh, but yeah. Well, yeah, and and Cedar has that option where it can automatically start those cows for you. But the problem is, you usually don't want to do that while the turbines in startup. So. So in many ways, it's easier if the uh, yeah if the operator can choose when to start it. Yes. So, okay. Uh, at this point, um, we're going to switch over to a demo. Uh, this is our our new feature for this year. We've added a cylinder manager tool in Cedar. Um, Unlike the, the rest of, uh, most of our other applications in Cedar are desktop based. This one is, is a browser. Uh, so this one, you, know, you pull up Chrome or whatever Microsoft's browser is and uh, uh, go to the URL and pull up the cylinder manager. The idea with this is um, you, you, everybody has to have you know, the, the, the cylinder information has to be reported to EPA for uh, your CGA's linearities and daily CALs. So the, the point of this tool is to let you enter your, your spare cylinders. Uh, and that's on this side of the screen. It says available cylinders. The, uh, all the cylinders that are available for you to use that you've already entered are here on the available side. Uh, you can see. Like this one here says it's in service. 
Now, you probably can't read it from the back, but there's a little bit there that says in service. But all of these are the available cylinders. And then on this side over here, there's our in service. And then there's also a tab for gas profiles. Gas profiles shows me everything that's in the PLC. Uh, for example, if I if I just got a, a new system and no cylinders have been assigned, well then I have to go to the gas profiles and assign one because there's nothing in service right now. Uh, so let me show you how this works a little bit. So Shane, if you can pick, so let me back up. So on, this is a very simple system. One one unit, it's got O2 and a NOx high. Uh, CO high blended bottle and an ox low, CO low blended bottle. And if we scroll down farther, there's a, there's a zero uh, down here as well. So there's, there's really not much to this system. I kept it very simple for this demo. So go ahead and scroll back up. So the way this can work is if you've already entered the spare cylinder, which you don't have to, but you can, you grab, click on a, a spare cylinder, and we'll pick this one. So click it, and we'll drag it, and we'll drop it over on this, this uh, drop it on the top one, uh, cancel. So we're gonna, we're gonna replace this O2 cylinder with one of these, grab an O2 one. So we're gonna take an O2 cylinder, we're gonna drop it over here, there we go. And it's going to ask us, do you want to do this? And it's, going to, and it's going to say, what are you going to do with the cylinder you just replaced? Are you going to retire it? It's empty. That's the default. Uh, if you want to move it back to the spare list, you can, but default is just retire. So go ahead and hit OK. And now, you, if you're close enough, you can see there's a little spinny bar there, a little spinny circle and a little spinny circle. So the whole system is working. Uh, but it's taking this new cylinder data, it's pushing it out to the PLC, and it's gonna wait to make sure the PLC gets updated. It's gonna read the, the data from the PLC back into the system. And here's the thing, if any other PLCs in the system, anything else is using this same cylinder in the system, even if it's in other shelters, other PLCs, it's gonna take this change and it's gonna propagate it to all of them. So you only have to update it once. So this usually takes about a minute by the time it, it figures everything out and the data gets out to the PLC and it comes back. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's the idea. Uh, there's a, and while we're sitting here talking, eventually it'll, it'll figure everything out. Uh, there's an add cylinder button up here, which, you know, has kind of gone off the, the screen a little bit up top. So that's how we would add a new one. Go ahead and click the, the add, add cylinder. And it's going to ask for the ID, expiration date, vendor. Uh, you know, there's a list of checkboxes here. And then we don't have enough room on the screen, but we can scroll down. And there's a couple more options. Uh, go ahead and click NO or CO. And then scroll down. We're limited by the size of our screen here. And here's where we can enter the concentration. So go ahead and cancel out of that. I, but that's that's where we would add one. Uh, you can add this. Um, you can add the spare cylinders here ahead of time if you want to. Uh, we're still working on an option that will allow us to. Uh, some of the vendors will give you a file, an XML file, where you just import it, and we're, we're still working on that option to get that integration put in. Um, the, the other thing I'll mention is your touch panels out in the shelters where you go enter some of that information right now still work. So this, uh, this also works with if, if a SEMS technician is out in the shelter and, oh, I just swapped out a bottle, I'm going to put in my cylinder information out in the shelter, new concentrations, new vendor ID, this system will pick up all of that from that PLC in the shelter and will also propagate it to everything else that it needs. Yes. 
Oh, yes. Sure, go ahead and click on the show filter button over here. And you can click on, if, if you know, if you want to filter by gas type, you can. That's like NOx, CO2, whatever. Uh, units, you just cut it down to one unit. Of course, I've only got one unit, so that won't help here. Or gas profile, go ahead and click on that. And that gives us a list of everything here. If I just want to see that one, you know, that's, that'll cut the list down real short, real, real easy. So, yes. Anywhere they have access on the network, yes. If you can get to it on the network, yes. So, the, my browser base is not the internet. Right in behind your firewall, you have right and I have the same their access. The same network as the DOS computer is on, not internet. Right, but it's thinking that if you have uh, the access to the firewall, yeah. yes, browser, yep. yeah, phone, phone. absolutely, yes. We do. That's been that's been requested. Uh, I don't have it in here on on this demo, but we do have. We we've designed it, and that's one of the next. That's still on our to do list. Is is how to, uh, and uh, that that's an interesting point with the the mobile device because it would be real easy to take your phone and just click, take a phone, and and if if the phone was on. The network and could get to it, it'd be real easy to upload that that data sheet. Right. The 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 challenge that we haven't totally figured out is a lot of sites, you know, you, you pull out your mobile device, but your mobile device isn't on the plant network. So you pull it out and you know, scan it and bring all that. It's on your mobile device, but now how do you get it from your phone through the plant firewall to the DAS? That's that's something we're still. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. So the the question uh, basically, if we can get if we can if we can get through the firewall, then yes, we can. You know, there's ways to do it. And that's another option is uh, you know to have a device in inside the network that can take the scan and and upload it. So it has been asked, and it is on our to do list. Uh, the way we built it into the system was the the way the system's built is the cylinder ID does not uniquely identify the cylinder record, you know, because the cylinders can be refilled, obviously, or you can have them recertified, the same cylinder recertified. So what we basically what we came down to was the cylinder ID plus the expiration date should be unique. So the, the combination of those two should, you know, should be unique. Okay. You have multiple. 
Uh, do you have multiple, like multiple Cedar servers right now? Okay. I, I think the, the short answer that I know works is, you know, we, you just go up to the URL and point it at a different server. Um, right. I, I think the answer is yes. Sure. That, that, that's... If, if, if you want a combined list, uh, that, that's something we'd, we'd have to think about. But I'm, I'm, we'd have to build that feature in, but I, I think it would be doable if the demand was there. So. Certainly, it give you the option to export this out to a seller or a port. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I have. So, I mean, we could keep talking about this, but uh, I mean, it's what you see is what's there. So I, w I will mention, since we're just about done, I will mention, click on these little three dots over here. So there's, there's an option to edit the cylinder, which, you know, that's obvious. Uh, retire, we know what that means, you know, get rid of it. Or clone. That's an interesting one because oftentimes at the plant, you, you get the cylinders, you order the same cylinders over and over and over. So I'm going to go enter a new cylinder, but this one's almost like a cylinder I've already got. So the clone basically says, I'm, make me a new one, but fill in like the vendor ID, fill in the, the gas code list, the types of gases, uh, and I'll, do, I'll just fill in what's different about this cylinder versus the last one. So that is a little bit of a time-saving streamline thing. So, all right. Sure. Are we talking about um, are we talking about settings? Are we talking about data points? Well, Brian already put this on my to do list, so <laughs> yes, yeah, so so by the time you come back next year, I should have a new feature for you. <laughs> oh, come on, only four? Well, let me let me ask the question. Are you are you looking for and maybe I'm blending two things together. Are are you looking for you know here's my unit 1 quarterly report, here's my unit 2 quarterly and you want this one and this one. do you want do you want these combined into one PDF? Are you asking for that or are you just hey spit out these reports? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can add that. I think it stops at monthlies right now. I think it's as high as it goes. Sure. Okay, yeah, I, I wasn't sure how much demand there was for that, so that's why I never made it. Uh -huh.
Well then, well then that's zero decimal points then. We could in the Yes. My, my concern is that that you know that we have to do on the report side. Yes, we, we can do that. Then if we miss the report, okay, that's that. If you do a color, color like we have. So we can do the asterisk in the short term, then we can do a color along the way. Yeah. Yes. That would work. I would probably stay away from blue because blue, if you look at the calendar for it, you can get God's punch. So, come up with a Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. 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 I like the idea. Okay, I will. I'll, I'll keep that idea in mind. I like the idea. So, along with, uh, I think you mentioned filtering them. You've asked for that as well. So, yes. Yeah, I haven't forgotten about it. My, my, my. Yes. Yeah, my, our, our current UI platform doesn't allow a great deal. It is very difficult to get that kind of stuff in there. But we're, we're, we have a new, new UI platform in the works, and that's, that's going to let us do some of that stuff. Yes? Yes. Um, in the, and I don't have it on the screen here, but when you go into the auto, in the report generator, there's a auto report setup, and you can go in and pick the report uh, that you want to run, and then you pick uh, how often you want to run it, every day, every month, every whatever, uh, and you get to pick where does this report go. Uh, pick a printer or, or email. Huh? 
Is I, I guess the question is from the DAS computer where you're at, is that computer on your internal network? I mean, can you, if you had an email client like Outlook or something like that on that box, could could you email from that box to something else on the network? Because if you can do that, then then yeah, it's it's doable. If 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 it's on an isolated network, then yeah, you're just back to USB drives. So it's probably a good question for your IT people. Okay, so in addition to save as, it's I have like an email, send to an email or something. Okay, yeah. If the uh, if the server, there is some configuration in the in the uh, report generator options window, you can set up email. So if that's set up, then that feature would certainly we we can make that work. Okay. Yeah. You got to save, you got to pull up the report, save the file, copy it to your machine, email it. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have one more question? Yes. Uh, those come up as they're in Cedar as settings, just like GCV, and you should be able to do it from settings. Well, there's a well, there is alarms. Okay, so it sounds like kind of like uh, auto reports because auto reports do that, but they're auto. They're not. So this is more of a manual, but it's kind of like a template. Sure. Okay. Yes. Oh, it's all good. Uh, as far as I know, it's already running. We're it's running on Windows 11 today. I think that's specific to your review. I haven't had it. Been. That's that you're the one percent. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll figure whatever that is, little issue is, I'll, I'll figure it out. I appreciate the feedback on that. All right. I will be here the rest of the day and tomorrow morning. All right. So probably around and all the other stuff, but want to keep things moving along. Uh, I've moved less than twelve thirty. That's not a big deal. Uh, so if you're hungry, too bad. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm told.